Solana, Solana, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and human skulls all in a row. How did we get here, in the middle of nowhere, with my arm shooting pain up my neck? A year ago you were in my room, tripping your tongue through Dostovsky and Nietzsche, tentatively tasting tequila, and telling me it tasted like fire in your mouth and soil down your throat. A year ago, I put on Duran Duran, and we danced to Kankau Dumar, and you laughed as your legs tripped over mine. They called you Siren, or Night Hag. They heard the legends of the alien woman come to steal men away, and applied their tunneled notions of personhood to you. They knew only of the aliens that snake into the hearts and homes of humans. They never sounded your name through their lips. Solana. Or watched you giggle at Sesame Street and attempt their voices in Soprano. Solana, the love of my life, the son of my darkened mind. You sound like a banshee, I say, regretting the words, as soon as they spill from my mouth. She pirouettes towards me, arms aloft. Elmo wants to play. She trills and finishes it with a ply. I choke on my laughter, flicking cigarette ash on the carpet and humming Stairway to Heaven. She sticks a history textbook on her head, twirling across the room. I decide she is a mockingbird of a person and tell her as much you and your metaphors. She sighs as she dances into the bathroom. How human of you. You were chipper in the mornings, maudlin in the evenings. You paced weary trenches into my carpet at midnight, venting about the high matriarchy and the priestess you were assigned to work under. I pretended to understand and nodded at appropriate moments. In return, you watched me return from deployments, blank-eyed and unmoving, and held me, until I stirred alive beneath your touch. I never knew what you did for a living. I knew you came home from work, tired and weak, and sometimes scarred, collapsing onto the couch with an exhausted sigh. I knew you were bound by the oath to never break confidentiality, at the risk of your own life, but still I wondered. Maybe that was wrong of me. Maybe if I had loved you better, or loved you harder, I would never have asked. It's not fair, I say from the doorway. She looks up from the couch, one hand still in her hair. Blue skin glimmers against the wall. What isn't? You know everything about me, I say, sinking onto the armchair like a petulant child. I run a finger across cracked leather and attempt to pout. Solana raises an immaculate eyebrow and I don't know anything about you. She crawls over to me and runs a hand over my belly. I don't know that much about you either, she points out. She plucks at a stray hair. I yelp. I don't know what you do when you're gone. Yes, you do. You know I have to. And then I stop there, because I find the words stuck. The murdered sing a siren song in my throat. She sighs and pulls at another hair. See, she says, I told you so overflowing. It's the same thing. We lie in silence, looking out through the skylight, where stars are painted across black and silver calligraphy. Maybe I should quit, I muse finally. Become a janitor. I'll run away and join the circus. Good luck with that, she snorts. You'll get bored and die within two days. Solana, the wolf in sheep's clothing, the Judas of my soul. She comes home from work one day tired and sagging, pale eyes slanted with exhaustion. I hold her in my arms and whisper empty platitudes. When she stirs, it is to kiss me with a ferocity that belies her petite figure. Solana. I begin to protest, but then she kisses me again and pulls me by the lapels into the bedroom where we collapse onto the bed. Moonlight turns the bedroom blue, and unwillingly I think of Salasia blood. She whispers and sighs and pants, and I murmur assurance into her ear, even as my hand twists bedsheets into a Gordian knot. Solana I repeat, once we're done and lying panting in the darkness of the bedroom. She rolls over and presses a finger to my lips. 
Hush, she murmurs sleepily. Don't ruin it. Don't ask. I swallow my words, settling instead for tracing the outline of the barely healed gash that runs the length of her clavicle. Who did this to you, I think to her. And why? Solana, the jump when you think there's a step, but there's none. Deployments were the worst for it, made even so, when I knew you'd be sitting at home, doing your pirouettes and plies. I would sit in the Mojave cleaning my rifle, and hear you speaking garbled French. I see you dance before my eyelids and slip through my mind. At the worst of it, I would see your figure, superimposed over the Salasia, fleeing the smuggler ships, and pretend not to notice the judgmental looks from my men. This is your girlfriend species. This is what they do. Are you sure? You don't know her like I do. I sit in the FOB, holding scotch in a plastic cup that crinkles with every twitch of nervous fingers, watching my tombstone rise and set with the sun. You never asked what I did. I never told. Would you have understood? Perhaps not entirely, perhaps not at all. Generous less pauvre sigils. I speak in seagull shrieks, you in cicada chirps. We're different. You'd say matter-of-factly, butterflying tarot cards and tea leaves into inane predictions of the future. You were fascinated by the mystique and enthralled with the supernatural, no matter how many times I tried to tell you. Even we didn't believe in that. But this, too, makes you human. Solana. The anchor to my roiling seas, the master of my fate. Non tenias orum totum quad splendid ad orum. What? I say blankly, looking up from the reports on my lap. She dances past the living room and vanishes into the kitchen. Is that Latin? I call after her. Because nobody speaks Latin anymore. Shame, she replies with a tone that precedes an incoming lecture. You know, the Salasia always keep their languages. When someone who speaks that language dies, another child learns it. I catch the beer she tosses me. It spouts froth over my shirt, and I curse. You did that on purpose, I accuse. And that sounds like a great way to fill your head with nonsense. Solana skips over and buries her head into the crook of my arm. Humans, she sighs. So quick to discard knowledge. Because the Salasia are shining examples of learning from past mistakes. I say, and she freezes. Time hangs suspended in resin. I can see the minute hand slip in slow motion. Solana stares at me, and I stare back, hand still on my shirt dabbing away beer. When she speaks, it is with a throaty growl she has never used with me before. Hair prickles at the back of my neck, and I realize why the Seventy Year War dragged for as long as it did. Take that back. She snarls. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. But the door slams shut, and she is gone. I look down at the reports and sigh. Solana, the lamprey. The black widow that skitters past my windowsill. She vanishes one day without a trace, leaving behind the scent of cinnamon and vanilla and musk, and I upped her in furniture hoping against hope that she would have left a note. I shatter crockery against walls and crumple with an old shirt. I let the tears come, and when even those have gone, I turn on my phone for the first time in five days and hear the call to muster. And that's when I know why she had left, and why they say falling in love is like worshipping a fallible god. And what I have to do. It's when I pack my bags and drive to base, hanging the key to our home around my neck, where it rests by my dog tag. Which brings us to here, where I sit with my arm numb from a bullet wound one of your comrades gave me. My best friend lies dying in the corner, and I hear sobbing from the other room. Pipe snake through desert hissing steam. I look up at the moon and wonder if you are, too. And Solana, I pray to both my god and yours that we never meet on the battlefield. 
I pray that we will never have to stare at each other down the scopes of our respective guns, knowing one of us must kill the other. I have spent countless sleepless nights thinking, and I finally know what I must do. You are Solana, High Priestess of the Salasia Order, and I am Jack, Sergeant First Class of the Human Federation. We are at war over drugs of all things. I know now, that should we meet in the field, I will put down my rifle, and I will look you in the eyes. You were wrong Solana. Tarot cards and tea leaves do not make us human, any more than metaphors and similes do. We are an amalgamation of organs and limbs and meat, with rationality only occasionally entering the picture. You will do what you must, as you always have done, and I will give you all of me, as I always have done. This is what makes us human. Author's name and link to original text is in the description.